If you like looping or loop artists, or you're a loop artist yourself, or you're thinking about getting into looping, then welcome to my channel. My name is JP, and this is How Do You Loop? In these series of interviews, I dive into the minds of different loop artists from different genres around the world. We ask them, why do you loop? What do you use to loop? And more importantly, how do they use that equipment? Now, one thing before we get started, you may notice I'm wearing a How Do You Loop t-shirt. This has been designed by yours truly, and we have the How Do You Loop logo and lots of loops on the back. It comes in a series of colors, and you can pick yours up at teespring.com. There is a link in the description box below. But I'm gonna throw a discount code that's on the screen now to give you a nice little discount to go and get your t-shirt. Also available in a hoodie. Now, my interviewee today is Ben Rollins, who exploded onto the YouTube scene around two years ago. Ago. and he is a singer-songwriter out of Cumbria in the UK. It's a lovely part of the country. Ben has constantly been challenging the one-man band impression with his hard-hitting rock sound and being able to match the sound of a full rock band with his custom live looping rig. And that's no mean feat while you're supporting people like Frank Turner and even Katie Tunstall. This young man is a brilliant musician with some great ideas and lots to give, but he's also a fantastic tutor and has loads of different courses on pedals and software on his website, as well as loads of advice and ideas on his channel. So let's grab Ben and ask him, how do you loop? So ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, welcome Mr. Ben Rollins. Yay! Hi, you right? Hello, dude. I'm doing great. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on today. That's all right. Thank you very much. And your massively busy schedule to come and talk to us about how do you loop? First of all, I spotted you on YouTube when you did your ultimate live looping rig for 2019 video. Um, what really surprised me though is that on the video is your integration with Ableton Live. You use a Boss 505 and you have that crazy MIDI bass floor pedal setup as well. But even your latest setups, you always have something like Ableton collected to it. When most people, what they do is they choose either a hardware looper or a software looper. So explain to us why you have that sort of hybrid kind of setup, why you made that decision to go hybrid. So basically I first began using the Boss RC300 as my main loop pedal, but I found some limiting factors with the actual hardware of the Boss RC300. First was the audio routing of the actual loop pedal. The main issue I had was obviously you connect your instruments to the left and right connections and then the yeah. microphone in, and you can't control the end destination of that audio. It goes to all of the loop tracks. So that yeah. was causing, when I was trying to create my actual loops, that was causing a, a lot of wasted time in the actual production of the track on stage. So people were having to watch me repeat sections, which was frustrating. The next issue as well with the Boss RC300, you can't MIDI sync it to other devices. You can only sync MIDI devices to the Boss RC300, which is another annoying thing that it can, can do, but can't do at the same time. Right. So I began to look at alternative solutions to that issue. So this brought me to find Ableton Live because what I liked about Ableton Live was you had all the clips, which just gave you like infinite possibilities in how you could actually use that software. But I spent months like playing around with Ableton Live, but a problem that I then discovered was you couldn't overdub into the clips you had recorded. So you would record a right. loop inside of Ableton Live, but then yeah. you couldn't overdub the audio on top of that, which coming from a hardware looper is a huge shift in my workflow. So yeah. it meant you have to duplicate multiple tracks in order to so do is, all that, is that overdubbing. If, if you don't mind me asking, is that man creating a new clip on, in Ableton like every time if you wanted to? Every single time, yeah. Oh, wow. So let's, okay. say, let's say you had like a, the track one recording. So you've so you mm. got track one. If you wanted to maybe do three overdubs, you would have to have three instances of track one loaded in to record right. each overdub as a separate layer. <laughs> now, it's great having them as a separate layer because it allows mm. you to remove them, which you can't do on hardware loopers. You can only remove the most recent one and yeah. then reintroduce that. But it's, it's something too much to worry about when you're on stage because I just like to, you know, I'm playing the guitar, I'm singing and clicking all these pedals. I don't want to also be looking at my computer to see which clip I have selected so I don't mess everything up. Yeah, but it's too much. With, 100%. But with the time that I spent with Ableton Live, I enjoyed how much it could do, especially in regards to syncing it with MIDI and how reliable the clock data it had. You know, it was very, right. very stable for like everything. Uh, so I then upgraded to the Boss RC505. I, I needed the extra loop tracks over the, the 300. And then that allowed me to sync MIDI in and out so I could obviously sync Ableton Live to the RC505 or sync yeah. the RC505 to, to Ableton, whichever way I wanted to do it, which you couldn't right. do with the RC300. So that allowed me to create this uh, extension onto the RC505 because I could 
control of my audio routing in Ableton Live, you know, the destinations on where that was going uh, by right. automating it with clips and stuff like that. Uh, and then, yeah, that that's what led me to using it as a hybrid. More interestingly, on the MIDI pedals that you mentioned too. So yeah. I, I built those with my dad. They were like 100% DIY. We bought this that's like cool. 80, 80 pound kit off Toman or something like that. Like, and no instructions. <laughs> they were like in German or something. Uh, and we built... Um, we built those MIDI pedals, but the same thing, in order for me to trigger things with those MIDI pedals, that's what I use Ableton Live for, either to trigger like a sample right. with like a pad sample or yeah. actually trigger a MIDI effect or, or sound. Yeah, because you explain that in your in, in, in that in that video, which is obviously why you chose those pedals, you know, like because obviously it's it's selecting those um clips, right? So yeah. That clips, yeah. Mm. That's cool, yeah. man. It's, and I, I love the fact that like you just got this kit and then it's like just boshed it together. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> That's really cool. I like it. Thank you for explaining that because I think a lot of people, when they go down the looping wormhole, which is basically it is, um, you kind of either go one way or the other. I, I've explained this before, but you kind of, everyone, certainly with any loop pedal, a hardware pedal, you kind of hit a ceiling of what it can and can't do. And you want to punch through that ceiling but you can't and what you've done is something quite different which is then go well let's take software and then use that with it as opposed to just buying an extra pedal um yeah having said that though with extra pedals one of the videos on the channel that gets a lot of attention is the acdc versus 10 loop pedals <laughs> and when you do covers it seems that your choice is obviously is a mixture of rock and pop there's a bit of metal background in there as well which i'm yeah. all for is that where your influences are when it comes to making your own music yeah well i'd say so because as a kid i am my, well, my dad and parents, they, they, they absolutely love the uh, like classic rock type stuff, ACDC. Nice. So that's what I always grew yeah, up listening same. to. Um, so I naturally levitated towards that type of music. But there's just something about it where I love how each musician just interpretates the guitar so differently. Even though mm. they're all just playing heavy rock with loads of distortion on or whatever. The way they phrase the guitar, I just find really fascinating now I'm much older. Compared to like, obviously, this is a huge stereotype, but like you more poppy stuff. There's a yeah. formulaic approach to how that's created. There's still mm -hmm. a formulaic approach to rock music because that's what works, but yeah. it's the way each guitarist has that uh, accent when they play that really fascinates me about that genre. So I'm hugely influenced by that because you can just lose hours listening to different guitarists, Michael Schenke, you know, Randy Rose, Richie Fort, all these different guys and how they interpretate the same six strings totally differently. So there's nice. definitely a huge influence there into what I like to play, but also it lends itself well to looping surprisingly, because you know, ACDC, every single drum beat's just that sort of same kind of thing, give or take the tempo or whatever. <laughs> so it lends itself really well to that genre because it, it's quite uh, easy to create sections upon and you can do really crazy guitar solos over the top of it because usually it's just the same chords that are looped yeah. in a section for a majority yeah. of tracks. So it works well for that, but yeah, definitely uh, enjoy that the most, especially when I, uh, go bit from looping acoustic stuff to electric. I have the most fun on the electric because it's just so much more versatile what, what you can create with it. That's cool. That's nice. Now, this whole series is called How Do You Loop? And there is one question that's the same for every person I ask, which is how, who, or what got you into looping? Probably heard this answer, but believe it or not, it was Ed Sheeran. So obviously I was loving ACDC and all that type of stuff. But around <laughs> the sort of 20, when I was about 12 years old or whatever, like 2012, 2013, uh, I'd seen these videos of Ed Sheeran. Obviously he was getting played a lot on the radio at that time because his like debut album was out and that type of stuff. But I think he was touring with Taylor Swift at the time around America. Mm -hmm. And I was absolutely blown away that like just one guy could captivate this entire arena yeah. just playing these acoustic tracks in a way that I'd never seen before. And at the heart of what he was doing was the, the Boss RC 20XL loop pedal. So this mm. led me to become obsessed with these little like behind the scenes videos they were doing on that particular tour. And then by the time I was about 13, I then picked up a Boss RC 30. I went through to Newcastle and got a Boss RC 30. And then that like completely revolutionized everything. About a year later, I was playing live, but I was also doing primarily acoustic music then. Like I hadn't touched the electric guitar for like a whole year, two or three or whatever. I just right. solely concentrated on acoustic and looping because I just found it really fun because I'm from the countryside as well. So there's literally hardly any musicians to really collaborate with or create bands mm. with. And that was a huge problem I'd always had from a young age because I would maybe you maybe create a little project with people, but I was always like weird. And that one that was really obsessed with it, that was took it super seriously because like, I, I loved music so much. So it was all that I had a tiny pool of musicians to work with. And then additionally, I was like 
the only one that really wanted to do it. Uh, so the only thing I could control was to do the loop pedal thing because of nice. the Ed Sheeran stuff. So I, I studied Ed Sheeran extensively and almost mastered that way of performing. And then I became a bit more elaborate with it, like I am now with the 10 loop pedals and doing ACDC covers and stuff. <laughs> it's interesting that you actually have that as a influence because when I've seen your channel and stuff, we've seen like your, your looping rig when like, I think the 2019, 2020 looping rig with the metal frame and the 505 sitting oh, yeah. there. I would never have picked Ed Sheeran as your sort of like go-to <laughs> start point. The route That's to awesome. there, yeah. Yeah. Looking through your YouTube videos, you have had pretty much every looper that's come out in the past two to three years, bar maybe one. Um, yeah. is, the, your, is there a favorite? And second part to that question is, have you found your perfect setup yet? Yeah, this is a really good discussion point. I could literally talk mm. for about an hour here about yeah. this literally one <laughs> yeah. question. So most most it, loop it, artists it, can because we're all chasing the holy grail. We're all trying to find <laughs> that one pedal or that one thing that is it, you know? So yeah, yeah. 100%. Uh, so that is true. So I've tried over the past few years, I've had the RC30, RC300, and then I recently, obviously the RC505, but I did recently transition over to try out the Headrush Looper board because yeah. that was a quite a new territory with the touchscreen display. Yeah. I believe you have one as well, don't you? With that's my main, board. yeah. So that's my main. I actually transitioned from the 300 over to the Headrush. Definitely from that use case as well is huge. Like going from the 300 to the Headrush Looper board is a nice transition for somebody. Yeah. Now the main feature that attracted me to the Headrush Looper board was the fact you could simultaneously record two tracks at a time. Yeah. Now a problem that I was having on my any boss loop pedal that I had was the fact I might want to record like a kick drum that I'm playing with my foot as well as some guitar chords at the same time yeah. just to save a bit of time so I'm not playing the chords then playing the kick and people aren't having to watch me repeat things so much. But then when I got the Headrush Looper board I enjoyed using it but I didn't like the fact you had to record one loop first before you could mm. record two loops. Two. You, know, you, had to, you had to record that first bass loop before you could then do two at the same time. Whereas I wanted yeah. to do that from the off. And there was a few workarounds to do that, loading in a blank loop and all that type of stuff. So that that made me not really like the Hedrush Looper board because I liked it, but it didn't have that golden feature that was going to solve why I bought yeah. it. So I, I moved on That's from fair that. Enough. Great audio routing on it, to be fair. The routing is insane. What you can route to wear is is basically that's that's meant the main reason why i went for it is mainly for the routing um well actually the main reason i went for it went oh look one more one more channel one, i've got more, more, track, more than yeah. three uh and but not not a 505 yeah but that that audio routing is huge because again with the rc300 a huge problem you have to uh let's say a loop's too loud you have to lunge down to the floor and, yeah. and start but then the worst part is you're then on the floor so you're not getting accurate representation of what it's yeah. actually sounding like and then you stand back up and you're like oh, i don't know if that was the right thing to do but the headrush looper board is great because even if you wanted to you could also route each channel to a mixer and have that at tabletop yeah, height like, that was so cool and that um, removed the whole need for Ableton Live for a lot of the things that I do at the moment mm -hmm. to counteract for that on the RC505. But I okay. then uh, obviously use the RC505, but more recently, there's the new Boss RC500 loop stations. Now, I was quite surprised how advanced these are because obviously they're, yep. re they're replacing the Boss RC30, which had a pretty primitive menu system. You know, like there yep. wasn't really too many fancy things you could do. Whereas the RC500, it's resolved so many things that the RC505 I wish could do. For example, you can route the audio to loop tracks now. So you yeah. could be like input A can go to track one and input B can go to track two. Yeah. And that's something that uh, is why I've started using it just for solely that reason, other than the fact it's smaller, lighter, and I like the uh, foot switch design and all that type of stuff. Mm. And the MIDI integration is fantastic. Yeah, the MIDI integration is huge. Yeah, especially on that form factor too. Because mm. originally I wasn't too keen on the TRS MIDI connections. Uh, uh, we're not on the RC10R and all that type of stuff, but now I've got more of the cables and you know I've got extensions for the cables and I've just sort of transitioned out of it. I'm kind of over myself with it because initially <laughs> uh, I wish they provided adapters and stuff. I had tons yeah. of MIDI cables that I couldn't plug into <laughs> the pedals, which is really annoying. <laughs> yeah, it's what I think one of those things where obviously if you're you're searching for um, more control, more more control over the routing, but also you're searching for flexibility as well i think it sounds yeah. like um so yeah, yeah. so the second part of that question then is have you found your perfect setup yet well i think um i'm very close with these two rc500s that i've got mm. synced together for the four track loop pedal um 
But I, I honestly feel like whatever boss releases next, and I have no idea what that will be, <laughs> the RC1000, RC5000, whatever it ends up being, mm. I think that will actually finally be it because it will basically be the RC300, but leveled up with these features that are present on the RC500 because the RC300 is probably being the all-time favorite pedal that I've had because it's lasted mm. me so long before I had to actually upgrade it. Yeah. Uh, but I'd say right now, the RC500s are definitely my favorite synced up with Ableton Live nice. for what I require at the moment. So just an additional question for you because I just want to throw it out to you specifically because you've used the 505 so extensively, if they put the 500 stuff, which is floor-based, into the 505, would you then use the 505 more or would you still yeah. stick with floor based? Uh, yeah, I definitely, um, yeah, 100% would go straight back to the RC505 because st I still use the RC505. I've tried mm. syncing it up with the RC500s, you know, to create another huge loop right. pedal. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. there are just some simple even workflow things that you know, it's totally transform your experience. They're like going through the menu system. It's really nicely categorized on the RC500 and it's a lot yeah. slower on the RC505, things like that. But yeah, if they implemented all of that stuff onto the... Uh, 505 that like they did another big firmware update like they did back in 2016 yeah, yeah. I, I would use that probably as my sole pedal uh, for all that integration it would provide nice. so there we go we've heard it first boss are going to bring out a uh no i'm joking I'm uh, <laughs> <laughs> this question is horrible but i have to ask it which is what is the best and the worst thing about looping I think the, uh, I'd say the worst part first is nobody knows what it is. That's the hardest thing I face. You know, I, I try and tell someone, they're like, oh, you're a musician. And they're like, oh, you're in a band or you're a guitarist. And I'm like, mm. no, I'm like this one man band. And the way I try and summarize it is I'm like a cooler version of what Ed Sheeran's doing. <laughs> but then there's a the problem. There's a percentage of people that don't know what Ed Sheeran is doing. So you then have to explain, yeah. like, he's got that device. So he loops things. But the people that do, they get what he's kind of doing. I'm like, I do that, mm. but like times 10 with like a million other pedals and a million other instruments. Uh, yeah. So that's probably the worst part of it, actually helping making people understand what you're doing because you play gigs and venues and, and like pubs and clubs or whatever. And half the time you question what was the point in bringing all this gear because like 50% <laughs> of people thought you were just using the backing track backing anyways track. and didn't realize yeah. it was all live. So that's probably the worst part of it. But the best part about it is the reliability of it, not not the not the equipment. Sometimes the re reliability of the equipment isn't a, a good thing either. There's yeah. a lot of stretch there. But I mean, I like, all, all I rely on is myself. You know, if something crops up, yeah. I, as long as I'm free, I can do it or, or whatever. You're not relying on, like, is the drummer free or, or you know, where's the guitarist gone or, or the album yeah. types of things. So basically what you're saying is the best part is that you it's all down to your timing and not some drummer who uh, can't keep a beat. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I like it's, that. It's That's all cool. on you, yeah. You've obviously played extensively with looping, and this is a whole part of how do you loop. But if you could give one piece of looping advice to someone who could be watching this and they're just starting out, what would it be? But it can only be one. One. I, I'd honestly say persistence with it because um, when I first got the loop pedal, like I wasn't very good at it at all. And if I'd have just given up, like like most people, like they you know they do a few loops and then they're like, ah, oh, it's not what I I thought it was going to be. But like I used to come back from like school every single day and I'd like loop the same two three songs and that's all I knew at the time on them. And by doing that, it allowed me to like solo over the same chords for like an hour straight. And then I'd finally yeah. find a riff that I could overdub. And then I go, oh, I can overdub riffs like that and then harmonize mm. riffs like that. And I would mm. just come back all the time and just keep looping it. And I'd try vocals and different techniques. I even do try beatboxing at one point, which I don't do anymore now because I'm not very good at it. So, <laughs> but like, I just, I'd say persistence, that one thing of just playing with it all the time and simply having fun with it. Because it, it's easy to get frustrated with it. And I, I still get mm. frustrated with it at times when I'm trying to do, and more frustrated with myself. I you know, try to do like crazy things with them. But yeah, de definitely just keep going with them. Keep going, persistence. I like that. Yeah. That's a nice answer, actually. I think it's just, I, I honestly think like looping is kind of the future of, of musical performance, especially right now. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, live music's restricted to like the corner of the room because so you need yeah. to space out all the tables and stuff. You can't fit a yeah. band in, but you can fit a guy in with a pedal. So yeah, I think it's uh, it's got its place. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you for that. That's a really great answer. And I think, yeah, if anyone's starting out, it is a riding a bike moment i think when you looping and it's you know you know with timing and everything else but being persistent and i've found certainly for myself a lot of harmonies in my my you know have come from 
messing around with a tr as you say like a track and then going oh yeah. what's the third sound like oh it sounds crap oh what's the fifth yeah. sound like oh that sounds good um so yeah so that's cool i like that answer thank you very much for giving that that's awesome you on your youtube channel have obviously lots of different pieces of advice and it's mainly that more of an, an advice kind of based channel more than anything else and obviously tutorials but the other thing you have is you've got loads of courses on your website and you've got loads of courses called the ultimate guide and it's like the ultimate <laughs> guide to some really brilliant things like the loop pedals effects processes you've got courses for logic ableton guitar soloing god knows where you find the time to film all that it's amazing um you also have a degree in music industry practice so when you put both of that together with the youtube course did you always want to teach music tech or is this something that's just kind of evolved over time yeah, it's it's definitely evolved because originally, uh, you know, as a kid, I always wanted to be like a, a live performance artist or whatever, you know, like the next version of Ed Sheeran, but cooler, as I said earlier. <laughs> uh, as I grew up, because I obviously I live in Cumbria, the countryside. When I was about 16, I, I moved out to London to study at like college and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, and I realized that the level of musicianship was at such a, a, a crazy degree that in order for me to even like be able to do anything in music, I had to become like the best of the best that I personally possibly could become, like the best guitarist I could become or the, the best mm. loop pedalist I could become or whatever. That's why I, I studied music and then went on to do the degree because it gave me an opportunity to just solely focus on learning guitar and all the, all the things were about the industry. Um, but as I began my YouTube channel, again, because I live in the countryside, there's no way I can you know gig around and get any form of a following. So the YouTube mm. channel enabled me to do that through performance videos but i had to find a way obviously for people to find me so i thought i could maybe teach people about what live looping actually is because i like i said earlier not many people actually know what it is so i could mm. almost educate people what it is so they actually can do more than just practice with their loop pedal and actually perform with it so that's what uh, led it to mature into what it kind of is now and then as i just started doing the youtube videos i just seen a demand appear for more detailed versions of what I was doing because people were often asking me can it do this this and this and I would be referring them to another video uh, but you, you right. know this yourself create YouTube videos yeah. it's yeah. very difficult to you know organize content you can do playlists but you can't really organize it into a streamlined learning experience whereas with the courses that right. allow me to take people from A to Z and then they you know they, they get everything they need uh, from mm. that single that single course that's cool that's really nice I like that because what you're trying to do there is literally help people and i think that's what youtube's all about certainly if you're doing tutorial based stuff or review based stuff it's like why would you buy this why would you use this so mr ben rollins obviously has a youtube channel if you haven't figured that out already and as we're recording right now he has just surpassed ten thousand subscribers congratulations well done oh, that's fantastic much. um but i believe you've got something else to tell the people today as it were yeah so obviously i've got my main channel ben rollins music but i'm also expanding out to do tech reviews as well because obviously when i'm uh, doing all this music stuff we buy a lot of tech equipment to to obviously create the videos so i have a second channel as well now called ben rollins and obviously if you want to learn about any of the looping in further detail my website benrollinsmusic.com is where you can find all of the courses wicked so we've now got two ways of actually watching ben we've got the new ben rollins channel and we've got the ben rollins music channel so please go and have a look at those so Thank you very much for coming on and speaking to us today. And yeah, man, that's pretty much it. I'm going to stop recording. What a lovely interview. It was really lovely to speak to Ben and we talked a little bit afterwards. So I want to thank him for that time because I know he's very busy. It was cool to see the mind behind that hybrid Ableton Live live loop pedal setup. And for me, certainly it was a real insight. Now, before you go, don't forget your How Do You Loop t-shirt. I'm going to put a discount code on the screen now. And it's gone, but the link for actually getting the t-shirt is in the description box below. If you like this interview, I'm gonna put the playlist up of all the interviews, which is just here, go and click that. And give Ben some love and go and subscribe to both his channels, the music channel and his new tech channel. Thank you very much for watching, folks. And we'll see you on the next one.